the east and west, the north and the south. From all corners of the globe. In our homes and our hearts, in the church and in the world. Let us worship God. to God. Heavenly Father, we bow before you in worship, and we praise your name because of our unfailing love. You are faithful in all your promises, and you always keep your word. You are trustworthy, and your promise preserves your lives. You are the words in this life. In this world, has my life. We praise your words that are soothing to your soul. Friends, hear the good news. Life is good, the past is over and gone. The future is open. In Jesus Christ, we are free to live in love. In forgiveness and in the newness of life, Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. Jesus had just taught his disciples to pray and now encourages them to be persistent, expecting a response from God. The First reading comes from Luke chapter 11, 9 through 13. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Speak, seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asked for a fish, will instead of a fish, will give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Here ends the first reading. So our gospel reading for today comes from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. Listen for God's word. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is any cheerful? Let him song praise. Let him sing praise. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick man, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man has great power in its efforts and in his effects. 
Elijah was a man of like nature with ourselves, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Here ends the gospel reading. So the bulletin says, why pray? Of course, I had an idea that changed, so it's a really sweet hour of prayer. And if you haven't noticed, today is all about prayer. We had the prelude entitled The Prayer. We learned about the prayer uh, with the children as well. And a couple weeks ago, I'm writing a, kind of a wave here. A couple weeks ago, Bruce told us about a prayer that helped him in his life. And now that he prayed the and, not, and how he prayed that prayer to make his spiritual life more nourished. Last week, Walt told us about the half of loaf and the Lord's Prayer. And this week, we are going to talk about the when and what of prayer. The United States was, in a sense, founded on prayer. The nation still turns to God in prayer, although lately, sometimes it might not be, doesn't seem to be the case. The House and the Senate begin each session with a prayer. The President holds an annual prayer breakfast, where he and a member of Congress come together to pray. Even Gerald Ford took office under difficult circumstances and had asked the nation for prayers. So just as the U.S. was founded on prayer, our lives also need to be founded upon prayer. For example, when we are faced with difficult decisions, we often pray. When we are discouraged, we often pray to God. When we face crisis, we often pray to God as well. As we heard earlier, James tells us about fighting prayer in our own lives. If you haven't read the book of James, it's a very practical book. He doesn't discuss theological matters, but he tells us in practical terms how to live as Christians. It is not surprising that he ends his book with instruction on prayer. James also tells us that although there is much to know about praying, we need to understand that prayer is real, Prayer is useful, and prayer is every day. It is practical. Many of you know that I grew up Catholic. As we were packing up our things to move a week or so ago, I came across a small black book, and on the cover, it read the words, My First Book of Mass. Now, the title may sound fancy, but it really wasn't. It was a book that explained the order of Mass, along with all the incantations that had to be said during a particular point in the Mass. And those of you that, are Catholic, that were Catholic, you know what I'm saying. Towards the end of the book, there was a section called Prayers to Remember. You know, the Hail Mary, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, without the last part. So I just gave you a list of prayers, but did you notice something about that list? They are general, they're common, and they are prayers that are to be recited during Mass or during the Rosary. That is not a hit on the Catholic religion at all, because we recite those on occasion here at JPC. I always felt odd with only praying that set of prayers. As a result, I found myself not praying and not being focused. I eventually came to realize that they were not personal to me and whatever situation I found myself to be in at that time. I began to ask the question of how does one pray and when does one pray? James answers the question of when we should pray. Quite simply, he answers in time of trouble. If you look at when this book was written, James wrote to those that were suffering at the hands of oppressors, suffering from persecution from those that oppose Christianity. In the end, it may have been James's readers that were saying, we are facing hardships, what should we do? And the answer was, pray. When faced with difficulty, we can do one of two things. One, we can blame God for it. The God, why me prayer, right? Potential results of this would be to stop praying or to stop worshiping God because he took my loved ones away from me. He made the accident happen to me, etc. Or two, we can go to God for relief. We pray to him for relief of whatever has happened. Lord, make me 
Lord, make me see the light at the end of the tunnel. But maybe it isn't about the why, but about the what. Perhaps we should be saying, Lord, what are you saying to me in these difficult times after I lost my mother? Or, Father, what do you want me to learn as I move through this situation? Or what do you wish for me to do? With all that being said, let's not forget that prayer can be positive. We must not forget about prayers of thanksgiving and prayers of celebration. We are reminded that how much thanking God can change your perspective of life and other situations and how they can give you peace, especially when feeling overwhelmed or facing unyielding pressure. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed in life, I encourage you to spin your prayer to the positive and thank God. As you do, God promises us that not only will your perspective change, but you will begin to experience God's love, peace, kindness, and compassion. But what about the power of prayer? Prayer is and can be a powerful force. However, we cannot access that power by using the magic formula. Our prayers being, our prayers being answered is not based on how, we artic how articulate they are, we don't have any specific words or phrases that trigger an answer from God. As Jesus stated in Matthew, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. After all, prayer is all about one thing, communicating with God. All you must do is simply ask God for his help, and there is where you will find the power God expects us to pray and to believe in it. We should not be surprised that we have the passage, that we have that passage from James that I read earlier. James doesn't tell us to pray. He tells us that prayer actually works. Let us remember this week and, be, and beyond this week that when we pray, we are tapping into the most powerful force into, in the universe, God himself. When we respond to Christ in faith and humility, God forgives our sins or speaks to us on the what. Let us also remember that our prayers are always answered. They may not be directly answered, but they are answered in some way, shape, or form. That is what makes prayer a powerful force. To God be the glory. Amen. Gracious and everlasting God, we are happy to be able to say, you are our Father. That is, that this is one of the ways that we recognize the wonder of who you are, your compassion, your steadfast love, and your righteousness. We come together and pray to you with open arms, open hearts, and open minds as we pray our prayers to you. We pray for those on Marilyn's list, and we pray for all those that are battling cancer. We pray this day for all those who have all kinds of illnesses. We just ask that your compassion and support be there with them in their time of need, especially Woody. 
Uh, we pray for our joys this morning. And we celebrate all the good in our lives today, tomorrow, next week, and beyond. We pray for the fathers, the grandfathers, and the father figures, and the mother figures, and all the grandmas out there. Uh, and for you as we celebrate our lives together. We pray for those that have been affected um, in country, in war-torn countries. We ask that you be with them always and forever. We pray not only what I said here and what we have said, but we pray for those prayers that are deepest within our hearts. We pray all of this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples and people of all nations, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Friends, wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. Wherever you go, show compassion for others. God has a purpose in your being right where you are. Believe this and go in his grace, his love, his power. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.